clay is pretty easy. Put your left hand on the, on the clay just like we do for centering. But instead of the thumb being up, lay it down. Then take the two fingers of the right hand, thumb lays across, two fingers of the right hand, get locked onto the thumb. This is really important. You don't want these things separated. You don't want the, the two elements separated. You want the thumb locked into the two fingers. The two fingers are slightly curved and they're even. Even though we have a middle finger that's extended and long, we want to even it up. Lock the thumb to the two fingers, clay revolving around at about a medium tempo. Fingers go to the center. You push down directly down, keep the speed up, don't go slow because the centrifugal force and the, and the force of the turning clay will help you move the fingers into the clay. So how far do we go down is the question. If you go too far, you're into the bat. If you go too high, you've got a big chunk of clay in the bottom that's going to make making your form even more difficult. So there's a means of measuring this. You could take your pin tool, in this case I've got a a small knife, but the pin tool will work the same way. Stop the wheel with the right hand, put the tool into the clay all the way down, let it touch. Put your first finger down to where the clay meets your finger, pull it up. If you can get a tight shot on that, you'll see how much clay is left there. That's about a quarter of an inch, and that's what you want is a quarter of an inch of clay on the bottom. You don't want this much clay, you don't want too little clay about a quarter of an inch. Now we're ready to go. Once you've determined, if it's not deep enough, if you have too much clay showing, obviously push it down further. Now how do we pull it back? Again, thumbs, two finger, thumb and two fingers are locked together. Hand around the clay. The clay is moist, the hands are moist. And what you do is apply a little bit of pressure, keeping your thumb and the two fingers moved together. Pull the clay back. Now what you want to be able to do and make sure that you do is that the interior in here is, is flat. Can you get a nice tight shot of that? The bottom of the pot that you've just opened is flat. That's what you want. If it's curved and it's crooked and it's got divots and you've done something wrong. So opening it up these fingers need to be flat to the surface of the clay and pulled straight across. Don't allow your fingers to go up or down. Then when that part is done, take your clay, or take your sponge, and compress the bottom of the clay. By compressing, you're pushing it down into the, into the wheel head, into the bat. This is removing any air. It's aligning the clay particles and the molecules of the clay to be firm. When that's done, it'll look something like that. All right, now that we've opened the clay, and what we've avoided, there is a little overhang here, but that's acceptable. If you go this way, see how much overhang there is? The bottom of the clay is way down here. This is an overhang. You're going to have problems in, in bringing that up. So you've got to be careful as to how far you open it. This rim, this edge here, the outside and the inside should be equal to the edge of the inside diameter of the clay. You want this to be as parallel as you can. That's the better answer. The more this is straight up and down, the easier it is going to be for you to pull it up. If it has an overhang, but it has a tire, a little belly in the center like that, and you're going to try to pull it up, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Let's get this re-centered, and now we'll start pulling up. So pulling up is a process of controlling these two fingers on the inside and thumb on the outside. And you want the flats of the fingers on the clay. Not the tips of the fingers, but the flats of the fingers on the inside, thumb on the outside, flat of the thumb. What you're going to do when you start is just apply a little pinch and pull in, in an upward motion, like this. 
and now you're going to add the sponge on the right side. So the position of the sponge is, first of all, put your fingers on the sponge this way so that they're extending right to the tip of the sponge. You don't want the sponge this way or too many fingers that way, just the sponge and the fingers become one, just like this. And we're going to start by putting them sideways next to the thumb. So this thumb is here, the sponge and thumb and two fingers are here, and they're going to go right together. So when you start pulling, you pull up with the left hand and you push in with the sponge towards the center, just like I'm doing now. Straight up all the way to the top, keeping the fingers flat on the on the inside and the outside of the clay, then when you're at the top, you release it this way. Let's do it again. A little water. You're all the way at the bottom. Sponge. Suck and thumb. Pushing in with the sponge. And there you go. Straight up. Here's what you don't want to do. So if this is happening, you want to be careful. As you're pulling up, you don't want the pressure of this hand here against the clay because what's going to happen is you're going to start making your bowl. You don't want this flare out this way unless it's specifically what you're attempting to do. See, you don't want that. You want it to be able to go straight up and down. So let me, let's go back and we'll do that once again. We're going to open the clay. Thumb laying across, two fingers locked into the thumb. We're going to go down almost to the bottom. Take your measuring tool, the pin or your knife. Go in, drop your finger down. That much clay, about a quarter of an inch is what you want. And start pulling towards you. Nice and even, flat bottom on it. Make sure it stays wet. Then, using your sponge, compress the center. If this is extending further out than what you think is, is comfortable to do, which this is, this is too far out, you want to volcano it. So volcanoing, which we haven't talked about, is nothing more than the process of moving the clay into a slightly inward pitch, just like a volcano would be, or a mountain. You want it that way. See the difference? You want this side to be straight up and down, vertical, a right angle to your bat. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this up now. I'm compressing the rim. Notice how I do that also? We didn't talk about that. Two fingers on the top, first finger on top of the rim. This is to kind of level it out. You want your rim to be nice and even. You don't put a lot of pressure on it. Just let, let the clay go through the fingers. These two fingers here, not down here, but near the top finger across the top that way. Here we go, we're going to lift it. Use two fingers on the inside, if not three fingers. Put the flats of the fingers against the clay. Thumb against the clay here. Sponge held at the tip and turned vertical, not horizontal, but vertical. You're going to squeeze lightly as you push in with the sponge slowing the rotation of the wheel down to about a medium speed. That gives us our first pull-ups, just like that. See how the sponge is locked in with the fingers? all the way up to the top, and then release that way. Okay, now, what happens when we can't get our thumb? We pulled up high enough where we can't get our thumb to the bottom. Now here's a technique for doing that. This is called a side-by-side. -side. Start with this maneuver. Two fingers, the first finger of each hand, left hand inside, right hand outside. 
and they go right next to the clay and the fingers are going to push the, the clay slightly as you move the fingers up. What this is doing is several things. First of all, it's aligning the clay, the inside and the outside, to be smooth and perpendicular and parallel with one another. Actually not perpendicular, but parallel. Side by side. Notice how the fingers are this way. The hands are locked together. They're not like this or like that. They're locked together. Like that. Let me do that position again. Thumbs are locked together. Fingers of each hand. Now, if we want to even pull it up a little bit more, with this finger, curve it slightly so that we've got the knuckle of our finger into the clay down here. First make a little ridge. And take the finger, bend it, so that the knuckle fits into the, into the little ridge, into the little crevice there. Then what's going to happen is I'll do it from the outside. Is these two fingers are going to move together coming up. We're going to pull that crevice up. The fingers in that little arch, the little finger, clay the water on it. Fingers in the clay and you're moving it up. See how the this right here is being pulled up. That's where the clay is. That's where the that's right here on the finger. I'm pulling it up. The inside finger is slightly above this finger. Inside finger above this finger. So they're not moving together up. This one is slightly above it and moving up. The hands turned in, not out, but turned in. And I'm pulling. the rim. Let's do it again. Make the little indentation in the bottom. Just turn your finger side, sideways or flat in there. Take your finger and I will, for an explanation, I keep my fingers, this thumb, onto the first finger locked in this way and they work together. You don't want it like this or like that. Put them together and turn them in slightly, not way out. Inside fingers, notice it's not pushed out here, it's straight down, flat against it, and slightly above this ridge and above the outside finger. Push in with your, with your outside finger, push in and pull up. The two hands together. Turn my fingers slightly at the top, and press the rim, see how easy it is. I want to do it again, and make sure I volcano it, put a little more water on it, we'll do it once again. Make the crevasse, the crevice at the bottom, do the pizza man. Fingers inside and out, outside fingers touching, pushing in, lifting the ridge. It's almost a feeling of pulling it up this way. Keep going all the way up to the top. Notice how the hands are touching. The thumb touches the fingers and the hands. One more very important element that we just didn't have, we haven't talked about that. That's the position of this right elbow. It is locked into the thigh. Don't let the arm float around. Keep it locked in. Like you do the left hand when centering, left arm, it's the right arm. It's onto the thigh, locked into the side of your waist. And with that, we have now produced a cylinder. And we're ready to take the next step, which is to produce any form that we want with it. This way, take the water out of the bottom. You want to keep the water out as much as possible because water produces cracks when it dries. So take the water out. 
nice straight form, we're ready to go for the next maneuver. So what we've done is centering, opening, and pulling up. 